we can actually apply either forces or displacements or even combinations of them as inputs. Let's illustrate this with an example that we actually used on the first day of class where we modeled a system uh, a little bit more complicated than this, but the key element was that we had a uh, mass and a damper and then we had a force acting on the end where the force was treated as the input. And we said uh, we wanted to find the uh, differential equation using this as the input and y as the output. And if you recall, we had an expanded free body diagram and immediately uh, something interesting happened, which was that FB turned out to just be equal to the uh, applied force here. So we immediately know FB is equal to F of T, capital F of T, without even needing to apply the damper equation. So then we can just sum the uh, forces in the direction of y, and those forces are just negative FB. Those have to be equal to uh, the, the mass times the uh, acceleration in that direction. So then, uh, of course, we have my double dot is equal to negative capital F, and so we're done. We have our differential equation with our output y and input f. And what's a little bit mysterious about this is why didn't we use the damper equation? Well, indeed, uh, we do have other information contained in the damper equation, which, uh, if we write it out, is equal to b times y dot minus x dot using our chosen template notation. So notice that in our first equation, we satisfied it because we had the known input and then we were able to solve for the output of interest. But in the case of the damper equation, it actually includes a new variable, which was the displacement of the damper, which we didn't even use in the uh, example we did previously. So this is a, indeed additional information. And in fact, we could even uh, solve for that variable. X dot is equal to Y dot minus 1 over b times uh, fb, which is also equal to capital F. So in other words, we have another equation now where if you agree to treat the quantities on the right as essentially known, then we can solve for a new output so this is another output of our system. So basically, the first equation tells us how our mass is going to move as a function of capital F. But it doesn't tell us what we have to, how we have to actually uh, move the other end of the damper in order to make this happen. So this second equation is what uh, actually gives us that information. It relates the motion of x to the motion of y. Now, we knew what f was, and given another equation, this differential equation, we actually then could say we could solve for y, and so that's how we can claim that these quantities are actually known. So uh, this is just a summary of uh, those same equations now written in a way that's a little bit more legible. Let's now move on to uh, taking this idea and thinking about uh, displacements as inputs. So now let's take the same system, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a different question, which is let's find a differential equation with y as the output and x as the input. So now we're going to treat the displacement of the uh, end of the damper as an input, and we're still interested in y as an output. Again, here's the same expanded free body diagram as before. Uh, we already summed the forces, and we knew that my double dot is equal to negative fb, and we already had the damper equation, which was fb is equal to y dot minus x dot. So uh, we actually have this information now, and let's uh, rearrange it so that we have my double dot plus by dot is equal to b times x dot. In other words, we all have the outputs of interest, on the left in input-output form. And since we're treating uh, x as an input, uh, we also have the inputs on the right 
So this is what we've, this is the, indeed, the input-output form that we were interested in. So notice that uh, we treated a displacement as an input, and we were able to solve for a uh, differential equation relating the input and the output 